CYC is a free channel that presents the Word of God for everyone. Your support will help us to continue the mission. Visit our website, cycnow.com. Even a dollar will make a difference. walking through the workshops and watching you talk and I had a really cute girl I think her name was Marina how many of you are named Marina <laughs> and Marina was talking about I want my shoes to have glass heels and sparkles in the front I know exactly what kind of shoes I want and then I had a girl right here a cutie who kind of believed in what I believe in and that is why the heck are we doing this? I don't want to get married. I was actually thinking that at your age, as a little tomboy myself, um, or not even a tomboy, but just didn't really think about marriage. Um, my sister, however, had her wedding dress planned from when she was seven, and guess what? She bought it when she was 22, 23. It's the dress. She never changed her mind. She didn't want to look at any dress. This was the dress that she was going to wear on her wedding day. I thought she was psycho. But for me, it was a different type of story. And I think I'm going to shock some of the people here who are married. Because there's a rule of thumbs for people who are getting married. And the rule of thumbs is, don't let the husband see the dress. The groom cannot see it. Well, my husband picked out my dress. <laughs> it's my best friend. And I wanted my best friend to pick out the dress that I was going to wear in front of him. So I put it on the internet and I was like, hey, Mike, which one of these dresses? Like that one. Went the next day, tried it on. I was like, yeah, I like it. Now, don't get me wrong. I did the girly thing that everybody else does. Family, friends, the whole say yes to the dress show. Everyone tells me what they think. No, you're too fat, you're too ugly, you're too tall, you're too short. Uh, not for you. I did all that. But I realized that I had to be by myself making this choice after my future husband had a say in it. So he picked it out on the screen, and then next day, without telling anyone, so no one gets mad, so I decided not to tell anyone, and I went the next day, put it on, and the little Hispanic woman, oh, si, si, senorita, si, oh my, and I was like, woman, sit down. I don't want to hear anything. This is the dress, because my, not my boyfriend, not my fiance, but my best friend, he picked it out, and I'm going to just try to take this in. And so I'm sitting down, and I'm standing up, and it's like, oh, comfortable, because that's number one for me. If I could wear Nike sneakers, I would, right? And so I put on the dress, loved it. That was the one, purchased it, done. That was how I picked out my dress. Now, don't get me wrong, before meeting Mike, I had to hit a few bumps, a few roads, actually one bump in particular. God had mercy on me and didn't allow me to be out in the field too long hitting too many bumps. He just let me hit one good bump. And if there's anything I am with you, it's honest, and I'm going to share it with you. It takes a lot to share personal things. All right, I won't lie. I like sharing personal things. Um, won't say the guy's name because I don't want to embarrass how bad he looks right now. But there was a guy, and I thought he was the one. Okay, gonna be a dentist? Mm-hmm. <laughs> parents, knew my parents? Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Got the prayer and fasting going, church guy going, three years of I love yous. Three years. Families, back and forth, visitation. Three years of gifts. One day, 
Maggie, I don't want to be with you anymore. I need to tape it, and it needs to be my like cell phone ringer. <laughs> the awe. Um, hurt me? Oh, yeah. Some of you guys look at school people going out with each other, and you think, wow, six weeks? They're going to get married. My God, three months? She might as well be a mommy right now, and he should be the baby daddy. Three months. Right? Three years of my life. Three years of my parents' life. Three years of the Yabuna who had to sit on the other side and listen to how he's feeling, how the relationship was going. Three years of fasting, praying. Three years. And God was like, no, nope, not the one. He didn't go psych, because he didn't like to play jokes on me, although sometimes I think he's quite humorous. But he had to teach me what love wasn't in order for me to know what love is. What do you mean by that, Maggie? You got the gifts, the I love you, the fast and the prayer. The... What else is there? Well, later on I found out that he found another girl during our three years, happened to be his cousin. That's okay, we're not judging here. But that floated his boat, didn't know about it. So a little dishonesty, a little cheating there, a little, little lies, and you know what? Found out a year later, didn't even find it. So a year I was going through a lot in my head. And I was like, you know what? You know we go through this, the no more men thing. No more boys, no more men, no more. None. That's it. I didn't scream anything else. I didn't say bye, homo, nothing like that. I just said, no more boys. Very hard to find. Very hard to find a groom. Very hard to find a groom that in their very veins runs the blood. I love you. Very hard to find the groom that wants to spin you and show you off because it's the greatest achievement that he could have ever attained. Not his job, not his money, not his car, not his house. You is what he wants, desires, breeds for, lives for. How many of you want that man? The dress. Now, granted, it's not a wedding dress, but it does signify the blood of Jesus covering all that I've done to myself. I want to also remind you that the dress is in our wardrobe. It's attainable, like I told you in the first lecture. You don't have to buy it. You don't have to steal it. It's there because you've had it from a long time because it was mentioned in Ezekiel 16 from the days of your youth. You do not remember the days of your youth in which I did all that I'm about to share with you right now that he did in this chapter. The dress. Let's tear apart the dress, D-R-E-S-S. -S. So that was the line I told you about in lecture one. Later I passed by, saw you kicking in your blood, took the corner of my cloak, and I clothed your naked body. And you all did the... Right? D. Deepen your knowledge of the bridegroom. The verse that I'm hitting it to in Ezekiel 16 that I hope one day you read, hopefully tonight, declares the sovereign Lord, you became mine. So he goes through this whole list of things he did with you. Wash your clothes, put perfume on your bracelets, put... And then he says, and I made an oath, and you became mine. So, I had a counseling session. This lecture is full of counseling sessions, so you're going to just die when you hear some of these stories. I had a kid come to me and say, in my first year of counseling, so I was a, I was a newbie, and he's like, so, Miss Lee, this is now after 15 times of seeing this kid. Totally gay. He's gay. Fully gay. <laughs> By choice, 
not by bird. And he sat in front of me, and of course there's no such thing as by bird, scientifically, no, tr no proof. So he sits in front of me and he says, Ms. Lehman, what's your Bible say about people like me? Oh my goodness. Should I tell him he's gonna die and go to hell? That like totally ends my sessions with him, I'll never come again. Oh my goodness. Think now, you're in my spot. Oh, oh, oh OMG. God somehow, and not somehow, but he directly always does this with me because he knows I'm stupid as heck. And he somehow throws wisdom sometimes at me or knowledge. And he says, all right, say this. Throw it at him. So I said it. I said, well, Pablo, his name's not Pablo. I can't say his name because we're on TV and I can't say his name because of confidentiality issues. But I said, Pablo, um, well, the Bible says that all sinners are going to one place, not entering heaven, and that's all sinners, liars, thieves, all of them. So basically, Pablo, the sins that I've done could definitely lead me very well into there. Oh, so your Bible says I'm going to hell. Do you read the Bible, Pablo? Ah, see how I did that? Cool, right? Well, I didn't do it, but... And um, he's like, yeah. I read it. I go to Catholic Church whenever I feel like it, and I read it. Cool. Where, do, what, what do you read? I read I'm going to hell. <laughs> All right, then. Yeah, but I don't care what the Bible says. I know I'm going to heaven. Yeah? What do you mean? I just know it. I feel it in my heart. I know it. I'm not going to hell. I know God. He's going to take me no matter what. Freeze frame. Deepen your knowledge of the bridegroom, Jesus Christ. His laws, his ways, his rules. Don't sit there and try to convince yourself that you know him just because you sat through my lecture. Don't convince yourself that just because you heard the liturgy or you're hearing bits and pieces here and there, you've summed him up. Deep in your knowledge. Now, you can't see, but it's a bride there on a, I don't know, the, I really created a really cool design for you, but it's not coming out because of the light, so forgive me. But the bride is sitting there on the laptop. And I know you're the texting generation, so I'm going to ask you to text him. Text book him. His textbook is the Bible. Text him as much as you can. Talk to him through this book. Every time I open up the Bible, I take those messages personal. Granted, when I was your age, I couldn't understand the these and the thous. And I was like, what is this? Humana, 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 what? <laughs> Had to have guidance. I forced myself into meetings that were not for my age. Forced myself. Abuna would come. Maggie, this is not for you. Sorry, I'm going to do it. It's not for you, man. You're 13. It's for 16 up. I know, when I just, um, I heard that the topic was this today. I didn't know what the topic was. And I wanted to be here. I don't know what it was in me. Okay, I do know. God calls you. He's becking on you. He's yelling at you, screaming. He's trying to get the living that he created to come back to him. If you hear that sensation, that feeling of I need communion, I need him now, I need, that's him. That's the bridegroom on one knee. That's the bridegroom calling to his bride. That's the bridegroom saying, I got your pretty dress. This is the bridegroom. That kid Pablo, unfortunately, depicts a lot of us. Many of us get so comfortable in our dirt, we convince ourselves, it's okay. God's going to take me anyway. I did a little rhymey for you. I could rap music too, maybe later. But anyway, we do this.
convince ourselves that the dirt we're in is a-okay. Yes, he came for the sinner. Yes, he came for the dirty. Yes, he came for the adulterous woman. And yes, he came for who I am as I am. But he wants you to spit in your dress. He wants you to shine. He wants to bring you back to what you were, his. And so when I see Pablo and I walked away from that session, all right, we were okay, I, I, I felt it's over. Did it go the way that it should have? I don't know, it was a rough session. But I do know that I reflected after and I thought to myself, goodness, so many times do I convince myself it's okay, I'm going to heaven. Deepen your knowledge. Text him in his textbook. Read. Don't just rely on lectures. Get to know him deeply. At one point in time, I was given a job. When I was your age, I was like, ooh, a job at your age, right? And it was a nice job. It was in Baruch College, because my mom worked there, so I got a hookup. But we didn't work together, so it was great. <laughs> and I sat by myself, and I thought, this is a lot of time wasted. And there was really no internet around me, so I'm like, mm, my goodness, this is boring. So I decided I'm going to memorize the creed. It took me a while, because I told you I'm an idiot. But I thought to myself, I need to memorize stuff that people start spitting out in church and not looking at any books. You know, you're standing there and then all of a sudden we believe in one God and you're like, mm, what do I say? Our Father weren't in heaven, I'll be there. And you whisper it, hoping nobody sees you're praying a different prayer. You're given time. Deepen your knowledge of the one on one knee. Deepen your knowledge of the one who chose death for you to live. Deepen it. Every time you're about to text a silly text, now that all this technology is out there, which I love, have things come to you. Now you don't even have to open the Bible. It could just like be text to you in the morning. And you open it and you're like, oh, a psalm. Wow. A verse a day keeps the... R, rid yourself of anything stopping you from fitting into the dress. Now, I'm not calling you fat. <laughs> rid yourself of anything that stops you from fitting into the dress. Counseling session moment, here we go. Most popular girl in my school. I'm gonna name her Jessica. Her name's not Jessica, but there are people here who go to my school. <clears throat> One of the most popular, how about that? There's a few popular, this one's really up there. And how do you know she's popular? Guys want her, girls want to be her, things like that. Comes into my room, what problem could she have? Hi, Miss Lehman. <laughs> Hi, how can I help you? Well, I have to tell you something, but please don't, yeah, I know. I know the drill. Um, yesterday, um, I took a knife and I started cutting myself. Oh, okay, not a surprise, cause, but totally surprised because it's her, but not, I've heard these stories, but in my heart, I'm like shocked because you, you're in hope class, a class that is for super smart girls. You are wanted by everyone, everyone wants to be you. They come into my counseling sessions and all they say is, I wish I was, I wish I was. I didn't say this to her. This is all that I was thinking in my head. Why? So I don't know why. I've been cutting since the sixth grade. Do you have any reasons? I mean, no, 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 no. Oh my goodness, this was another hard session because Usually people come with a substantial reason. I'm too fat, I'm too ugly, I'm too... They come out with some reasons. This one has no reason. She's sitting in front of me saying, no, no, that's not it, no, no, no. Let's fast forward through the months. She ended up taking a lot of medication because finally through 
the process after you say you want to kill yourself, they realize she needs medication, it's that bad. So she's on about a few different medications, comes to me in her medication state and says, I tried to do it again yesterday. Oh. How? I don't know why I said how, but I was interested in how. I don't know. I guess last time it was cutting, so I wondered if it's the same thing. I wanted to take the shower hose and I sat there and I said, I want you to slow it down and walk me through it. I want you as if I'm an idiot and just talk to me like I don't understand what you're saying. Tell me slowly everything. Well, I took it and I'm in the bathroom. Okay, in the bathroom. I tied the shower hose. Not, okay, how'd you tie it? Just, did you put thought in it or did you? I just put it carelessly. What stopped you this time? Why are you here today in front of me? My mom's voice. Oh. Okay. Then I also asked her, where was it last? My bedroom. Okay. Are you usually alone? Yes. We started realizing, or I started realizing in the process, it's not about her cutting herself. It's now trying to figure out the root. Where, when, how, who, what's the patterns here I was looking for? And I found them. And wouldn't you believe it's the same patterns that I would find in anyone who comes to me saying they have a problem in trying to reach him. Same patterns. I'm alone. I'm usually alone. Usually in my bedroom or my bathroom usually surrounded by people who believe in the same thing. I asked her, do you have a best friend? Yeah, I told, I told my best friend. Great, what did your best friend say? She goes, oh, I totally understand. I used to do it too. <laughs> okay, can't use the best friend, can I? The goal now, if you want to rid yourself from anything that stops you from fitting into this dress, because let's, let's admit it, you could fit into that dress easily because it's spandex and it's just comfortable. This one you've got to fit into. And in order to wear this dress properly, you have to identify and not only identify what it is that keeps you away from him, you have to identify how, when, where, how it strikes. Eve. We laugh at her. We laugh at Eve because she talked to a snake. Eve, snake, was talking to you. Didn't you stop there and say, why is this snake talking to me? Duh. Okay. But he got her when she's alone. He got her in a place that she feels comfortable in. I'm always comfortable in the bathroom. I don't know about you. Bedroom, right? Why is she comfortable? Because she was always in the yard. It was her daily thing. Talking to the animals was probably something he saw from afar a long time ago. Took note of it. All right. So if I came in a snake, then she would totally believe everything. She would not think anything wrong of an animal talking to her because she's used to this stuff. He studies. The enemy studies you like you're a book. He's had so much more experience than us because he's been alive for a long time studying humans. And he's realized we can be dumb sometimes. We're not dumb, but he just knows our weaknesses and our strengths. And he gets us only in our weaknesses. So here, this girl and I, by the grace of God, realized whenever she is alone, that's when she's attacked by these thoughts, and she still doesn't know why. I said, do you hear voices? It would have been interesting if she said yes, but no, it was more interesting that she said no. I don't hear any voices. All right, so she's not that crazy. And all these girls are dying to be her, and on the sidelines, she's sitting there trying to get rid of her life. Find out when and where and by whom and around whom you're attacked so that you could rid yourself of whatever weighs you down, whatever makes you feel weak, whatever takes you away from fitting into this dress, this relationship with your groom. Find out what it is and when are you attacked by it. One of the people in our school decided to get a little too toxic for me. I don't drink. I never drank. 
And if I tasted it, it was like, as you can see, I don't need alcohol. <laughs> can you imagine me on alcohol? <laughs> okay. So, these very simple stories in the Bible and make them your own. That's why they're there. It's not to entertain you. It's to make you sit there and think, wow, that's a solution to a problem. That's something I'm feeling right there. I could do it. It totally applies to me. Rid yourself of anything stopping you from entering this special dress. That's a bride with boxing gloves. I'm going to ask that anyone who got a label from someone today, um, it's not a label, but a piece of paper with a verse on it, if you could just make your way to the front here. Let's hear some of these promises. Come. Your name. Name in church? Mary Yusuf Rutherford. Rutherford, Mary Yusuf. Say it nice and loud. I'll give you all that your heart desires. Matthew 20, Matthew 21, 43. Keep your eyes on the kingdom of God and all shall be added to you. How many want a rich man? How many want a man who gives them everything their hearts desires and we're not even talking about money here because if anyone knows anything about life today they know that money's not all that much of a big deal i'll give you all that your heart desires so my groom promises thank you mary round of applause for mary <laughs> your name? Monica. monica from what church saint mark monica from saint mark my family will always protect you. And that's in? Psalm 34, verse 7. So in Psalm 34, 7, he says, My angels will encamp around those who love me, who are with me, that are mine. My angels will encamp over them. You know how you say my guardian angel, or you hear people say, Oh, I was pretend God was my angel. It's in the Bible. Not so much the word guardian, but my angels encampeth around those who are mine. So many times you hear people say, well, his family doesn't like me, but oh well. Or his mom is out to get me, or oh. This is a marriage in which you got his peeps on your side. You got his people, you got his angels, you got those who cannot be shaken on your side, protecting you. How many of us in a relationship would love a man who always protects us? All right. My name is Linda and I'm from Macar. You'll never be sad. Revelations 21.4. He wipes every tear from your face. Thank you, Linda. Round of applause for Linda. He wipes every tear. How many of you have heard your girlfriends come to you in school and say, well, this is what he did to me. He lied and he... And then he oh, How many of you have heard all the stories and if no one came to you, you heard it through the grapevine? There's a girl in school who broke up with someone because, uh, and you hear, you see Jerry Springer in school. You're like, what is this? Why is everybody cheating and lying on each other, right? You see all these crazy, and we call it what? Drama. And she's drama. Right? How many of you want a man that will never cause you to tear? Never cause you to be sad, and guess what? You never have to think about who he's texting, why he's texting, and who he's on the phone with. How many of you want that? Never second guessing your man, your groom. I'm Phoebe from St. Mary East Brunswick. Hi, Phoebe. I'll never lie to you, John 14, 6. There goes the line. I don't need to talk about that, but he says, I am the truth. Forget about me saying, I'm not going to lie to you. You want to really hear it? I'm the truth. This is it right here. It's me. I'm, I am the truth. 
No man could declare that. No groom could declare that. Now, I'm not telling you all not to get married. But I am going to say that for Mike to have found me, he had to come through my first love. I am going to say that for Mike to have seen me and approached me, it had to be through God. So take him as your own so that he can open these doors that you wish to be opened, whether it be friendship, whether it be the man of your dreams, whatever it is, he opens those doors. But only if you take him, he'll open the right doors those doors will be right to be open. Thank you. I'm Catherine from St. Paul, Atlantic City. Yes. I'm wealthy. You'll never go poor. John 14, 2 and Matthew 6, 31 through 33. Awesome. So this one says, I'm wealthy. Now, of course, money and so on, but we hear in Revelations, we also hear in the Gospels, in my Father's house there are many rooms and there are mansions. Keep your eyes on the kingdom and all shall be added to you. These wonderful verses that allow me to see if my focus is getting to know him, then on earth he opens up all these doors for me that I wish to be opened. So explore the promises and the powers of the dress. S. Surround yourself with people who help you keep the dress on. I'm not going to say you have friends that strip you naked. <laughs> but I am going to say this. A girl came to me in the past month, and her story goes something like this. I gave away my life savings. Okay. And how much was your life savings? 2000 What do you mean you gave it away? I gave it to people in school. Um, all right. I must say this is a story up there in the shocking turf. Did you, like, what do you mean? I mean, did you just go and just... Yeah, I went in, I had $300 one day. A girl asked for money, I gave her $100. She said, do you have any more? I gave her another $100 bill. And every day from one month to the next until the 2000 was gone. Why? Why'd you do that? I don't know. Really? 2000 and you can tell me I don't know? Later on we realized it was to buy these friends. It was hoping that if I give you this money, you'd stay with me as a friend. Notice I said you'd stay. That means these people were already her friend. They were talking to her. She just wanted to kind of make sure. Here, I want to show you I got the money and and people, it came to the point where people in school would go to her and say, I heard you were the girl who has the money. What story in the Bible does this remind you of? And you tell me the Bible doesn't apply to your life? <laughs> yes, pretty girl right here. Yes, you with the prodigal son, and you, you're probably saying the same thing, right? Prodigal son. Money everywhere. And then when you're down and empty, and then the crazy thing was, we took all the kids she gave money to, and every one of them, except for one, every one of them had to say, I told you, I told you, all we got to do is just trust you. You don't got to buy our friendship. We told you that. All of them were saying this. I thought they were enemies or something. Maybe she was just trying to be friends. No, these were people who were already talking to her. And some of them would look at her and say, we, we, we told her, we told her, we just wanted them. We took them. We took it. I was like, so you took it and did what? Did my hair, my nails? How much did she give you? 600.
Surround yourself with people who help you keep your dress on. True friends would have never taken that money. True friends, like the girl that I said except one, she started crying when her mom said, we're going to give back that money from her PlayStation money. The girl started crying. Uh, doesn't that show you which one out of all of them really didn't deserve the money? Some of us compromise very, very important stuff and personal stuff. We compromise it. and lose him in return, the groom, the one-on-one -on -one knee. It says here, and you didn't read it, but in Ezekiel 16, I really hope you read it, you adulterous wife, that means the wife who cheats, you prefer strangers instead of your husband. Tell me the Bible doesn't know its stuff. How about this? Prostitutions are better than you. Prostitutes are better than you because they actually take money for their actions. You don't take anything in return. You just give. That's the Bible saying this. That is God telling his people, Israel, you kept on giving and you took nothing in return. And how many of you keep giving and compromising? Yeah, a lie here a fib here, a gossip here, an image totally torn here, doesn't matter as long as I attain popularity, as long as I get that friend, as long as, as long as, and you know your personal lists. How many of us compromise? How many of us give sometimes and never think of giving, getting back? And that allows us to lose our groom. This is in Ezekiel 16. Last one. Show it off, girl. Now he's holding the bride and she's spinning. Listen to this. Ezekiel 16. You became very beautiful and rose to be a queen, and your fame spread among the nations on account of your beauty. Because the splendor that I gave you, your beauty was made perfect, declares the Lord. I've never heard that in a poem. Show it off. I was in Dunkin' Donuts one day this year in the morning, really excited to get my chocolate chip muffin and my French vanilla. And I'm standing online, right? And it's not so bad looking guy. Little goatee kind of beard here. Little like French kind of cap, a piercing, really clean cut. He looked preppy, kind of gangster, I'm not sure. And he was standing next to me and I heard him talking to himself. I'm like, great, crazy. Standing online and what does he say? I was like, Bismillah, whatever they say, our brothers and sisters who are Muslim, when they are entering prayer. And I think to myself, he's taking this as an opportunity to not only pray, but pray slightly out loud for people to hear that it's his time to pray. I could have easily looked at him and said, who do you think you are? But I looked within myself and said, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be your name. It was a reminder for me to show it off. It was a reminder for me to show everyone who I said yes to. It was a reminder to show everyone who won my heart and can win your heart if you say yes. I pray that all of you are challenged to say yes to the dress.